So you think you know a lot about private equity, eh? Well, we're gonna test your knowledge. Today, we have three questions for you on IRR and MOIC, Multiple Uninvested Capital, also referred to as a MOIC or MOIC. So let's get started. Question number one. Let's say you made an investment in a company for $10 million and sold your investment 10 years later for $50 million. Which of the following would be your MOIC and your IRR? A, MOIC of five times and IRR of 7.2%. B, MOIC of four times and IRR of 14.9%. C, MOIC of five times and IRR of 17.5%. And D, MOIC of five times and IRR of 400%. The answer is C, MOIC of five times and IRR of 17.5%. Let me walk you through this. MOIC equals sales price divided by investment. So that's just $50 million divided by $10 million, which equals five times. Now, IRR equals sale price divided by investment to the power of one over N, where N is the number of years. All of that minus one. Assuming that the only cash outflow is the initial investment, and the only cash inflow is the sale price. By substituting in MOIC into the IRR equation, we can solve the equation as follows. IRR will now equal MOIC to the power of one over N, all minus one. And solving for IRR, we will have IRR equals five, since MOIC is five, to the power of one over 10, since the investment is for 10 years, all minus one which gives us the answer of 17.5%. If this sounds complicated, no problem. Please check out our video titled IRR and MOIC, where we break this down using a simpler example. Okay, so let's move on to question number two. Let's say an investor invests $10 million in a 10-year private equity fund that makes 10 investments in years one to four of the fund and sells all of the investments in years five to nine of the fund. If the fund's IRR is 17.5%, the same IRR that is in our last question, how much capital would the investor most likely have after the 10 years? A, less than $50 million, B, $50 million, or C, more than $50 million? The answer is A, less than $50 million, while the fund is looking for the deals in years one to four, not all of the investors committed capital will have been called. Because of this, investors will need to keep their capital liquid and ready for capital calls. And it's highly unlikely that the investor's liquid capital will make up to 17.5% while it's waiting to be called. It's a complex idea. So if you want to fully understand it, please check out our video titled Issues with Committed Capital where we go into detail on this concept. Okay, let's move on to question number three. Which of the following is true about an American waterfall in private equity? A, it is also called a deal by deal waterfall. B, it is also called a whole of fund waterfall. C, it is only used by American companies. Or D, there's no such thing as an American waterfall in private equity. The answer is A, it's also called a deal by deal waterfall. An American waterfall allows the general partner to collect performance fees on a deal by deal basis. This is in contrast to a European waterfall that ensures limited partners will receive all of their capital back plus a hurdle rate before the general partner can collect a performance fee. For more information on waterfalls, please check out our video titled Waterfall, private equity. Those are the three questions we have for today. How did you do? Please let us know in the comments. And while you're there, let us know if you have any recommendations for future questions. We'll be posting weekly quiz videos to test your PE knowledge. So remember to hit that subscribe button.